All right, so now what I want to do is go over the arithmetic operators we're going to use while programming in JavaScript. So once again, let's just start out with addition. We're already pretty familiar with this. So let's just set up three variables. I'm just going to go const number one. Let's just set this equal to five and then const number two. Let's set this equal to six and I'm going to hit six there. And then const number three, let's set this equal to 11. Okay, so we know that we can do something like const sum is equal to number one plus number two and then plus your number three. Okay, so if we were to console.log the sum variable, we all know we would get five plus six, which is 11, and then 11 plus 11, which is 22. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and I'm going to go ahead and use my up arrow to run this. And we do end up with 22 as a result. Okay, so that's as expected. We also saw that the type coercion, if we were to convert one of these guys into a string, would give us some weird results, right? So let's just quickly cover that real quick. If I make this guy into a string, okay, in the middle, you have the number five here that gets added to the string six. So JavaScript will convert the number five into the string five. It'll do string concatenation and you'll end up with the string 56. So let me just put a comment here. You would end up with the string 56 at this point. And then when you get here, you'd have the string 56 plus the number 11. Okay. So then again, it would do string concatenation because it would convert 11 into a string and you would get the string. You would get the string 5,611 as your final result. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. And let me clear this out and run this and you get 5,611 again as a string. So it's very important to understand the type coercion that happens, especially when you work with the addition operator. So let's move on and talk about the subtraction operator. And to do that, let me just erase all of these. We'll use three new numbers. So let's do const number one. Let's do something like 20 and then const number two. Let's do 11 and then const number three. Let's do, I don't know, something like 14. And you can use any numbers you want. It doesn't really matter. And they can also be positive or negative numbers. And I'll show you that in a moment. So to do the subtraction operator, I just use the minus sign. So I can do something like const difference is equal to, let's do number one. Okay. And then minus number two. So because 20 minus 11 is a positive number, you would get nine. If I subtracted away 14, I'd end up with a negative five. So let's not do that just yet. I'll show you that in a moment. So console.log, we're going to do the difference variable. And we should get 20 minus 11, which is not. So let's pop open the terminal, clear this and run this. And we do get not. Okay. So that's as expected. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I change this to a string? We saw the type coercion when we were working with the addition operator, but now we have the subtraction operator. So when you work with that plus or that addition operator in JavaScript, remember you also have string concatenation along with adding numbers. There's two roles there. Well, with the minus sign, you're really just using that to subtract numbers. So what happens is JavaScript is now going to decide to change this guy from a string into a number, okay? And so you're gonna get the same result. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and let's run this and you still get the number nine. Notice how it's highlighted in yellow. It's telling you it is a number. Okay, and you can even do the type of to prove that to yourself. So let's control C to copy this and let's do type of here. And I just wanna show you real quick, if you run this now, you do get number here as the type of. Okay, so now that we understand the type coercion that's gonna happen with minus, this would apply to multiplication and division as well. I'll show you examples of this. You can also, let me just change this back to just the number 11, and let me delete this comment so this is gone. You can also end up with negative numbers. So let's say I come through here and I put minus number three. Okay. And what's going to happen is we'll talk more about this as we progress, but we're going to use something called the order of operations. So because it's just subtraction here, it goes left to right. It starts with number one, which is 20. It subtracts away the number two variable, which is 11. Okay. So that's 20 minus 11, which is nine. And then it subtracts away the number three variable, which is 14. Okay. So nine minus 14 is negative five. So if we go ahead and pop open the terminal, clear this and run this, we get negative five. Okay, so you can get negative values here. You can also make something into a negative. So let's say I put a minus in front of that 14 there that changes this guy into a negative 14. So what's gonna happen here, in case you're bad at math, 
The number one is 20. The number two is 11. So let's think about this. You have 20 minus 11, which gives me nine. Okay, so that's kind of the first step. The second step now is going to be nine minus a negative 14, okay? In case you don't know this, when you subtract away a negative, it's like adding a positive. So this is the same as saying I have nine plus 14, which is going to give me a result of 23, okay? So if we go ahead and run this now, let's go ahead and clear this and run this, we do get the number 23. Okay, so that's all as expected. So now what I wanna do is move on and talk about multiplication. Okay, so let's do some smaller numbers here since we're working with multiplication. So I'm gonna go const, I'm gonna go number one is equal to, let's do something like five and then const number two. Let's set this equal to four and then const number three. Let's set this equal to three. Okay, so if I wanna get the product or the result from multiplying these three numbers, I can do something like const product is equal to, so I would take the first number, so number one, and I'm gonna arrow up so I can use this guy here. Then I'm gonna use the star symbol, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to be my multiplication operator, okay? And then I'm gonna do number two, okay? And then I'm gonna hit this again, and I'm gonna do number three, okay? So this is just the way we multiply numbers. In a elementary math course, you might see the X symbol, the time symbol like this. Then as you get closer to algebra, and actually as you get into algebra, this is replaced with a dot, or sometimes we put numbers in parentheses to imply multiplication. But in JavaScript, this is how you can multiply two numbers together using this star symbol. Okay, so let's go down here and just console.log our product variable now, okay? And we're gonna have five times four, which is 20 times three, which is 60 as a result. Let's pop this open, clear this, and we'll run this and we do get 60, okay? And again, the type coercion works the same way. If I convert one of these to a string, okay, then JavaScript, again, because there's no string concatenation here, it's gonna say I have five the number times four the string. I'm gonna convert four the string into a number. And so you will get no change in the result here. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this and you get 60 again, okay? So again, you have to understand the type coercion and the differences between addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, let's say I put something in here like four, okay? The, the word four, what would happen? Well, remember we have that not a number, okay? If I pop this open and run this, you get not a number because it's trying to say, hey, I wanna do some type coercion here. Four is not something I can convert into a number, so I have the number five times this word four, which I can't convert and do anything with, so I just get a result of not a number, and then once I have not a number times this number three, it's still not a number, okay? So if you end up with not a number as a result of one of your calculations, you need to go back and check what you're working with, okay? So let's now go into division, and let's erase this, and I'll start with some other numbers. So we have const, and let's just go number one, and I'm just gonna set this equal to something easy. So let's do 20 and then const number two. I'm gonna set this equal to five. And I'm picking these numbers because 20 divided by five is exactly four, right? There's no remainder. So let's do const, we'll do, sorry, this is quotient is what this should be. And we'll say this is equal to number one, okay? And then you're gonna use the slash or the forward slash. So this is your divided by or your division operator. And then you have your number two here. Okay, so this is going to give me a result of 20 divided by five, which is four. So console.log, my quotient variable, and that's not what I wanted. And let's go ahead and run this. So pop this open, clear this, and let's run this, and we get four. Okay, so that's as expected. The type coercion here, again, works the same. If I was to convert this into a string, so let's say I made this the string five, and you were to run this, you would get the exact same thing. Again, it's the same reason. If it comes across this string five and this number 20, and it's got the division operation, well, it's gotta make a decision. It says, hey, I can't really do anything useful with the string five, so let me convert this into the number five, and then I can do 20 divided by five, and that's four. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the exponentiation operator. This one is a bit newer. All right, for exponentiation, let's go ahead and do const number one, and I'll set this to five, and then const, I'll do exponent, and we can do one at the end, it doesn't matter. We'll set this equal to two, okay, something small. And then we'll go const my power is equal to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take five, or actually I need the variable number one, which is five as the value. And then I'm gonna hit double star, and then I'm gonna hit exponent one, okay? So this is the same thing if I, as if I did five raised to the power of two, 
Okay, so that's all it's doing. It's taking this first guy you have here and raising it to this second guy here. So five to the power of two. So if I console.log this, this my power variable, I should get five squared, which is 25. So let's pop this open and let's go ahead and run this. And we do get 25. Now, this is kind of a newer way to do this. So again, we can come to can I use dot com and we have this exponentiation filled in here and you can see all the different places where it's supported. You can see there's no support for Internet Explorer. So again, you want to keep these things in mind when you're using new features. OK, so another way to do this and let me just do this real quick. We'll go const my power and I'm just going to call this two. I'm going to say is equal to we'll learn more about this later, but we're going to put math with a capital M. OK, capital M dot POW. OK, and inside the parentheses here, the first number is going to be your base. So in this case, it's going to be five or we could put number one. It doesn't matter. And then the second one is going to be two. That's our exponent. OK, so I'm going to put exponent one. And what's going to happen here is we'll get the same result. So this is the older way to do this. If you wanted to be supported in all the browsers, this should be supported in pretty much everything because this has been around forever. So we can go something like console.log. And we'll do my power two, and you're going to see that you're going to end up with the exact same result. You should get 25. So let's clear this and let's run this and we get 25 again. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is going to be the remainder operator. Okay. So this one is probably the most confusing for new programmers to understand in other programming languages. They have something that's called a modulus. The remainder operator is very, very similar. Okay. It's going to give you the same result if everything is positive, but if there are negative numbers involved, then it won't. Okay. And I'll show you an MDN article. I'll even link that in the description so you can read more about it if you want. But basically we can say something like const, let's do number one is equal to, let's do nine and then const number two, let's do something like four. If I divide nine by four, I'm going to get 2.25 on a calculator. Okay. But before we learned how to work with these decimals, we would get something like two with a remainder of one, right? Because if I take four and I times it by two, I get eight and there's one more to get to nine. Okay. So in other words, if I did nine divided by four, I would get two with a remainder of one. So the remainder operator is going to give me this remainder part right here, just the one. Okay. So if there's no remainder, you get a result of zero. So let's see a few examples of this. So let's do something like const remainder is equal to, let's go ahead and do number one. And then I'm going to use the percentage symbol. Again, this has nothing to do with taking a percentage. It is the remainder operator. Okay. So this is then number two, we're going to put here and it should give me a result of one. So let's go console.log and we're going to put remainder in there. So let's go ahead and pop this open, clear this and run this and we get one. OK, if I come up here and change this to eight, well, now we have eight divided by four, which is exactly two. So the remainder is zero. OK, so let's pop this back open, clear this and run this. You get zero. 